Bună, detectivi virtuali! Astăzi îmbrăcăm mânușile și intrăm într-o lume nebună a fostelor iubite care între timp s-au transformat în stocare. Da, ați auzit bine. Iubirea necondiționată poate la uneori o întorsătură bizară, iar cazul Jody Aries este o poveste care te va face să te întrebi dacă dragostea este cu adevărat o arbă sau doar așteaptă să-ți dea un cuțit în spate. Înainte să ne aruncăm în meandrele întunecate ale acestei povești, haideți să discutăm puțin despre combinația letală dintre sentimente intense și rupturile bruște. Oamenii pot face uneori lucruri mai puțin convenționale după ce relația lor se termină și Jody Aries nu face excepție. Jody a dus stalking-ul la un nivel complet nou. Suntem într-un adevărat roller coaster de emoții cu indicii ciudate în care vom descoperi cum fosta iubită a ajuns să vâneze, să înșele și chiar să o moare. Așa că gata de o doză serioasă de true crime? Jody Aries este femeia care a devenit trist renumită pentru comiterea unei crime teribile și în încercarea sa de o ascunde. Haideți să aruncăm o privire asupra vieții lui Jody și a evenimentelor care au dus la această crimă șocantă. Jody Arias s-a născut pe 9 iulie 1980 în California, a crescut într-o familie apare normală și a avut o copilărie obișnuită. Cu toate acestea, Jody a avut o viață tumultoasă și o serie de relații complicate. Ea s-a mutat în Mesa, Arizona și a început o relație cu Travis Alexander. Aceștia s-au cunoscut în 2006 și au avut o legătură tumultoasă, marcată de certuri frecvente și despărțiri repetate. Relația lor a fost una intensă și plină de conflicte. Totul părea în regulă și plin de pasiune, dar cum în această poveste, dragostea provenea doar dintr-o parte, cea a lui Jody. Cu toate că relația lor a continuat să existe, era doar de natură ocazională pentru a-și satisface dorințele carnale. Deși Travis o numea în glumă fosta nebună, Alături de prietenii săi, trebuie să admitem că aspectul sexual al relației lor era unul atractiv sau, mă rog, la îndemână, deoarece cei doi continuau să se întâlnească. Travis urma să plece într-o călătorie de afaceri și avea opțiunea de a lua cu el pe cineva, iar Jody era conștientă de acest lucru. Desigur, ea credea că ea va fi aleasa lui, dar într-o întorsătură surprinzătoare, el a ales să călătorească cu o altă colegă cu care se pare că petrecea mai mult timp decât cu ceilalți prieteni. A fost doar cu câteva zile înainte de plecarea în afaceri, când Jody a apărut la ușa lui Travis, așa cum obișnuia să facă, iar el a primit-o așa cum obișnuia. Era 4 iunie 2008. Știm cu siguranță că cei doi au avut relații intime, iar la ora 5 după amiază, Travis se relaxa în cada din baie. Momentul a fost surprins de noua camera lui Travis, însă nu știm dacă Jody a mai văzut vreodată o cameră ca aceasta. Cu toate acestea, ceea ce urma să fie surprins nu se putea descrie în cuvinte. 26 de tăituri și împușcat în față. Crima a fost extrem de violentă și brutală. Dar doar cu câteva ore înainte, cei doi se bucurau de intimitate, iar în fotografiile surprinse, totul părea în regulă. Ce s-a întâmplat? Jody a încercat să șteargă urmele crimei, spălându-se de sânge și curățând scenă. Ce nu știa ea era că din greșeală au fost făcute două fotografii când aceasta încerca să mute trupul lui Travis. Iar faptul că aruncase camera în mașina de spălat nu fusese de ajuns. A luat în considerare diverse scenarii pentru a-și acoperi faptele și a încercat să-și creeze un alibi credibil. A ajuns la un prieten unde a petrecut toată noaptea. După spusele acestuia, Jody părea complet normală, ba chiar mai mult, cei doi au avut parte de o întâlnire pasională. Cinci zile mai târziu, Prietenii lui Travis au intrat în casa lui, fiind neliniștiți de faptul că nu reușeau să dea de el. Cu doar o zi înainte de plecarea în Cancun, viitoarea colegă de călătorie s-a dus acolo și a descoperit că este mort. Imediat ce s-a aflat că Travis s-a murit, Jody s-a oferit să ajute, pentru că asta crede orice criminal. Mă ofer să-i ajut, nici măcar nu o să se gândească că sunt vinovată, iar cu cât sunt mai aproape de ei, cu atât voi putea și mai mult să-i duc pe o pistă greșită. Iar polițiștii nu bănuiesc asta, desigur.
get you um, yeah. just to have a seat here. I'll be lighting. Can you mind you can take my hand this up? What's that? Can you take my hand this up? Um, <clears throat> as soon as um, <clears throat> the detective gets in here, Detective Flores, he can take I think that's what he told you anyway, that he'd allow you to have your hand cuffs Nu știu dacă Judy vrea să pară relaxată sau dubioasă. Se pune pe jos, își pune capul pe masă atunci când aude pași, atunci când crede că polițistul va intra în cameră. Ea va părea că este atât de relaxată încât poate dormi. N-are cum să fie acea vinovată dacă a putut adormi. Păcat că polițistul avea deja toate dovezile care o legau pe Judy de locul crim. După câteva minute, acesta intră în cameră. Travis's case ever since it happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I know exactly when it happened, when he was killed. I know a lot of details. And just recently we found quite a bit of evidence. And I'll discuss that with you. The main thing that I'm looking for though is answers on why certain things happened, why they went so far, and also to get your statements. Okay. <clears throat> um, a lot of details on this case that haven't been released to, to the public and not even to Travis's family. And those details are known only by us and the person who did it. Okay, and, and that's one of the reasons I'm here is because I believe that you know some of these details. Okay. And I think you can help us. I would love to help you in any way that I can. Okay. Um, because we're here at the police department, the sheriff's department here in, uh, was it Siskiyou County? Siskiyou. That's what it's called. Okay. Um, and you're considered uh, under arrest or detained. You're not free to go. And I'm a police officer. I have to read you your rights. Okay. I'm sure you've heard them on TV. You, uh, you know, I have to read them off this little card here, but they're pretty much the same. And I'll explain them to you as we go, okay? Let's see. This is July 15, 2008, correct? Yes. Let me see what time it is here. It's 10.01. Good morning. This is case number 2008-161-0844. You do have the right to remain silent. Okay, anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to the presence of an attorney to assist you prior to questioning and to be with you during questioning if you so desire. If you cannot afford an attorney, you have the right to have an attorney appointed for you prior to questioning. Do you understand these rights? Yes. <coughs> and what I'm gonna do is just ask you some questions, ask you what you've been doing, um, you know, certain dates, what you were up to. Yeah. Um, you mentioned you were traveling on some of these dates. I travel. I want to kind of clarify some of these things. And, uh, you know, if, if there's a question that you don't want to answer, you don't feel comfortable, you can say no, you know. And, or, you know, you can elaborate as much as you want. It, it's completely up to you. It's at your speed. Mm -hmm. I don't want to pressure Is you. Is this recorded at all, or um, should we? I, think? I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, know if there's a recording or something. I don't know if these are voice recorders. I noticed them. They have video. They have audio or batteries or what? I don't think they're on. Sorry, Michael. 
it's okay. Still still yeah, I haven't touched those or anything, but... Uh, cât de inocentă și nevinovată este Jody. Scuze, voiam să zic, vrea să pară Jody. Aceasta a observat un reportofon vechi pe masă și a sugerat detectivului să-l folosească, pentru că ea nu are nimic de ascuns. Să ne amintim că ea a fost adusă în camera de interogare după mai mult de o lună de la tragedia petrecută chiar din vina ei. Deci după atâta timp, Jody crede că polițiștii au un alt suspect și tot ce trebuie să facă ea e să pară inocentă. Însă, acestea tocmai cei s-au citit drepturile. Nu este pregătită pentru ce urmează. Um, they're not on, so what I want to do is just get to the bottom of it. Everybody wants to know, okay? And you know, so I'm going to ask you some questions. You can voluntarily answer them if you want. Okay? Mm -hmm. Is that cool? Yeah. Yes. Fine. There was some question about you being. Um, well, let's let's start with this. What have you been up to since um, since Travis's death? What what have you been doing? Um. Well, I've been working. Mm -hmm. I haven't been really working in prepaid legal. There's not a whole lot. Um, I know that a lot of people have been posting on Facebook really nice things you know, and memories, and at one point I was like, well, maybe I should do that, so I posted this thing, and I just set all my memories, and I realized looking back on it that it was kind of, it kind of sounded immature, it's more of like my dear Travis kind of letter, and so I took it down, because... More personal? Yeah, some of it was details, <coughs> a little bit more personal, not too personal, nothing inappropriate, just, um, I just felt funny. I think because I'm a photographer, I tend to communicate more with the pictures, so I posted a ton of pictures that I had of him, um, and I have a ton more that I just can't access right now, and videos and things that I know his family would want, but, um, so I posted pictures and I took that down, and I posted something last week, but other than that, I've been on Facebook and MySpace a lot, looking at his profile, looking at his pictures, reading things um, about his and, um, any news Aceasta va intra în detalii care nu îl interesează pe anchetator. Ce nu se potrivește aici este că în câteva minute spune cum a postat poze cu el și mesaje către familia lui Travis, după care deja vorbește despre viitoarea sa posibilă relație. Însă, anchetatorul nu ora să se abereze prea mult și îi spune de ce ea este văzută ca și principal suspect în acest caz. And I've talked to a lot of people, and everybody's pointing a finger at you. I know. You know, everybody is saying, I don't understand what happened to Travis. I don't know who killed him. But you need to look at Jody. And sometimes the simplest answers are the correct ones. And that's one of the reasons I started looking at you a little bit closer. And... Over the last month or so, I, I, I've gotten into Travis's life, talked to all his friends, his family. I got a really good understanding of who he is now. And I got a, a very good understanding of your relationship with him. And I'm kind of just putting two and two together. Well, I and, think and, it, and it kind of matches. So. One of the reasons I'm here is to talk to you to figure out what was going on between you two. What I know the relationship that you guys had was of convenience sometimes. Obviously you weren't boyfriend and girlfriend anymore, mm -hmm. but you were still having a sexual relationship, which... Does you his know, family know about that? Just curious. No, just his family doesn't know anything. Okay. Yeah. I just, I'm, I'm interested in protecting his how he's remembered as well and you know he's he was very he was um well i'm sure if travis could speak right now he wouldn't care what people thought about him because they knew who he was okay a sexual relationship here or there because the fact he was a member of the church really doesn't matter in a the, couple in, times in the I asked whole him range of, of things yeah okay. i think in the broad scope of things that that could be right i just think that 
The reason I care about that is because he was adamant about that. A couple times we prayed about it, it didn't work, or we didn't stick to our, you know, our guns on it. And um, one time a girlfriend of mine just said, why don't you just go to your bishop and talk? And, and asked Travis the same, and I talked to him about it, and he got really angry. He said, I've already had problems with this in the past. I'm embarrassed by it. I don't want to go to my bishop. And so we just kind of stopped for like a few weeks, and then that must have been in, I think it was August, and then it just resumed. Well, the, the way Travis thought by, you know, getting into his head and everything that he's written in his journals and um, everything I found out about him, he, he truly had feelings for you. And for some reason, he felt that the relationship between you and him was somewhat unhealthy, but he couldn't stop it. And I assume that's probably maybe the same way you felt about him or... It's probably, Maybe you didn't understand why he didn't believe it was healthy. No, I, I didn't think it was healthy either, spiritually at least, and probably emotionally, but mostly spiritually. And I think that kind of once you have something that's not healthy spiritually, it filters through all aspects of your life. Um, it's it's one of the main, it's one, like there were three main reasons I moved back to Wairika, and one was I was in financial dire straits. Um, I was not getting ahead. It was not, I just, things were not working. Everything in Arizona was like, except for the wonderful friends that I made in my ward um, and the opportunity. It's like the Mormon land of opportunity there, which is awesome. But except for all that, like every sign was pointing, just to, just go, you know. You know, I wasn't able to hold a job, and that had never happened before. Um, it, you know, it, too much of my my nightlife can, was, was about him, you know. He would text me and, hey, I'm getting sleepy, dot, dot, dot. This is a bunch of Zs, and that was his code to like come on over kind of thing it's, it, coast is clear you know so um you know and that was just i lived five minutes away 10 maybe 10 depending and it was just too convenient and too easy and it was fun and we had fun when we were together and so it wasn't healthy and i totally agree with that um so that was one of the re well financially i wasn't doing well i missed my family i moved away um shortly after high school and I come back to visit but I realize over the years I've missed out on a lot of things with my little brother and sister. I missed out on just uh, their karate or their baseball or cheerleading or just whatever and um, and my dad is not doing well. He doesn't think he has very long to live but he always says that. It's been that way for like a decade. He's still here, thank goodness. Um, my grandparents aren't getting any younger, and I just have an awesome family. And I wanted to be able to just be here for a little bit and regroup um, financially. I owe my parents a lot of money, and I owe my grandparents a lot of money, and I owe friends money, I owe... Este ciudat că Jody plânge atunci când vorbește despre familia ei, care e ok, dar atunci când vorbește despre fostul ei iubit, care a murit într-un mod tragic, nu schițează nimic. Ea încearcă să pară afectată, însă plânge fals atunci când nu trebuie. A, ah, și apropo, când spune că locuiește la 5 minute de Travis, acesta s-a mutat acolo abia după ce s-au despărțit, fără ca nimeni să știe. În acel moment, prietenul lui Travis s-au numit-o fosta nebună. Dar nu durează mult și polițistul află și acest detaliu. După ce Jody mai vorbește despre relația cu Travis, anchetatorul vrea să afle despre motivul lui Jody, de ce l-a omorât. So, you know, moving over to his trip to Cancun that he was going to, um, when did you first find out about that, that he was going with Mimi? Oh, I didn't find, I found out about that at his memorial services on Monday, it was the Monday night memorial service. So you didn't, you didn't know Jackson. that he was going to Cancun? I knew he was going, yeah. Okay. You didn't I, know he was taking Mimi? I didn't know that. I think that's awesome, actually. Yeah. Um, well, unfortunately, Mimi had called him a week or two before, and uh, I told him, look, if you want to take somebody else, it's fine, but I have something to tell you. I don't look at you that way. Mm -hmm. I don't look at you as a boyfriend. If you want to be friends, we can be friends. And that really broke his heart. I know. Um... I mean, he didn't tell me that, but I found out from his bishop afterward when I talked to his bishop. Ați văzut cum a spus că Mimi nu îl vedea pe Travis ca un posibil iubit, după care a zis, adică am aflat de la preotul lui, în fin. 
Cum vă ziceam, la scurt timp după ce Jody a comis crimă, a fugit și a lăsat un voicemail lui Travis. Ea susținea că a fost plecată cu mașina și că s-a rătăcit. După 15 minute în care încearcă să explice polițistului ce rută a folosit și pe unde trebuia să meargă, acesta se satură de minciunile ei și îi spune direct. Remember I told you about the camera? Mm -hmm. That camera was damaged. Someone put it in a washing machine, ran it through a wash cycle with some clothes of Travis's, but the card's intact. Remember I told you that card was destroyed? I didn't want to tell you the truth because I wanted to make sure those photos were accurate and we can pull deleted photos. I don't care if you delete them six months ago. We can pull every photo that was ever on there. Pull the little pixels together, get the timestamps on them. Not all of them, but most of them have timestamps on them and we can verify those timestamps. Mm -hmm. And I have pictures of you in Travis's bedroom with Travis pictures of him and it's obvious you guys are having sex taking photos of each other and they're dated and time stamped on the day he died are you sure it's me I mean that because I Joey, was not there it's you and you know it's you I know all the details of this case. The only thing I don't know is why. Why did you choose to go visit Travis that day? And why did you do what you did? I never why did Travis? You did. You hurt him. That's why we're here. That's why I flew up here. I needed to talk to you about this. I can just arrest you and throw you in jail, but I want to know why. Why did you do this to him? I wouldn't hurt Travis. He's done so much for me. There's so much evidence in that house. So much. And it all points to you. I, I lived there. <sighs> I was there for months and months and months. Mm -hmm. I know you took pictures of him in the shower just before he died. 
I don't think he would allow that. Mm -hmm. And the camera actually took a couple of photos by accident during the time he was being killed. Really? Yeah, Joey, really. And the camera actually took a couple of photos by accident during the time he was being killed. Really? Yeah, Joey, really. You were there. Quit playing this game. It's time for you to just come out and, I and didn't tell know. me. I didn't know. I did not hurt Travis. I did not hurt Travis. I wouldn't do that to him. We have the pictures. Can I see the pictures? We have your blood at the scene. Your hair with blood at the scene. You left palm print at the scene in blood. What's going on there? Well, I can explain the blood and the hair. I don't know about my left palm print. How can you explain the blood and the hair? Well, because I used to bathe Napoleon all the time. And, um... You haven't been there since April. Right? Mm -hmm. well, He's had the house cleaned several times since then. And this hair was not just a, a hair, you know, from the shower or something. This hair was stuck with blood and obviously had blood on it. At the time it got stuck where it, where it ended up. My There's hair would no have been way. All over. There's no other hair. Can you take this. can you take a hair sample? And we like, have your DNA. No, 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 but I mean, like, you know how they could do drug tests and find out when things were done? No, can you? we can't do that. Can't you measure the time? We maybe? have DNA matching that hair to you. Okay, I know, but my And hair that hair had a follicle on it, and that means yeah. that that hair wasn't there very long. The follicle will usually dissipate and go away after a certain time. It'll fall off the hair itself. Well, when I would okay. brush my Joey. hair there, I mean... This one, you absolutely cannot, can, cannot explain that away. Este foarte greu să crezi ce ți se spune, mai ales când crezi că ai comis crima perfectă. Jody credea că a curățat locul crimei și că are un alibi solid, dar bineînțeles că nu era deloc așa. Ea tot pune întrebări pentru că nu crede ce îi spune anchetatorul, deși știe că toate descoperirile sunt adevărate. Cu câteva luni înainte, bunicul lui Jody raportase la poliție că îi se furase un pistol. Coincidență ciudată, același calibru cu care Travis a fost împușcat. Oare Jody plănuia asta de mai mult timp? Ce credeți? You either had blood on your hand and you touched the wall or there was blood on the wall and you touched the blood. Could my palm print have already been there and then blood touched it? Joey. Joey. This is over. This is absolutely over. You need to tell me the truth. Listen, the truth is I did not hurt Travis. Okay, so we're Joey, safe. you can continue to do this. A records check shows you that you uh, has reported a, a gun stolen. 25 Auto just happens to be the same caliber as the weapon used to kill him. A 25 Auto was used to kill Travis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, along with multiple stab wounds. Joey. If you want, I can show you some pictures of him. Do you want to see pictures of him? Part of me does and part of me doesn't. Why, because you don't want to remember? No, I Jody. just, there's a morbid curiosity. Jody. 
I wanted to know how he died. We can keep playing these games over and over again. I'm not going to believe you. When right. you start telling me the Listen. truth, then I can believe you. But I can't deny this evidence. I can't. The trip you took doesn't make sense. The opportunity was there. Your pictures on that date with him. Your blood is in the house, mixed with his, mixed, not alongside, but mixed. Your hair is there with blood, and your palm print is there in blood. I, it's over. Could it have been my blood from before? Your image is not important right now. Saving the rest of your life is. Listen, if I'm found guilty, I don't have a life. I'm not guilty. I didn't hurt Travis. If I hurt Travis, if I killed Travis, I would beg for the death penalty. Was there anybody else with you? I was traveling alone the whole time. Was there anybody else with you at Travis's house on Wednesday the 4th? I was not at Travis's house on Wednesday the 4th. You were? Because that's when the blood was left on, uh, the bloody palm print was left on his wall. I don't know what to tell you. If you were in my shoes and I had this evidence against against you, what would you say? If I had that evidence against you, it would yeah. be pretty obvious. But I guess being in my position, I, it just seems so impossible. I want to see it. I want to know. I mean, I'm not like I'm not a murderer, but I guess if I were to do that, I would wear gloves or you know something. I just how could my I know you tried to wash him off, try to get some of the blood off, try to clean him up a little bit. But you're even denying the pictures of you being there. There's pictures of you laying on the bed in pigtails. Pigtails? Yes. And I've got pictures of you that I've blown up, and you've got the little mole right there. It's the same one. It's you. It's obvious. I can show you some of these pictures. Do you want to see the pictures? Will that change your mind? I mean, I am curious. Okay, let me take a break and let me go find them. And I'll bring them and show you. I wasn't there. But you need to think about what you're saying. This continuing to lie is not going to help you. If you know, it did something I didn't do, it won't help me either. Okay, let's say for a second that I did. And I say, I did it. Mm -hmm. I mean. The motive is there, the jealousy issue. But I wasn't, I wouldn't even say it was jealous. I mean, there, um, there may have been some jealousy there, but. Then what is I think it, what anyone, caused this? I think if. You know, if anyone, maybe Travis was jealous, but... <clears throat> That's not what everybody else says. Well, they know he was jealous, but they think that you are absolutely obsessed. Obsessed is the word that they use. That's the word I hear from everybody. Fatal attraction. I don't know how many times I've heard that. I just, that's... Do you have a pair of sweatpants that's got stripes around the backside and zippers? Um... Somebody's seen you wearing those before. I've got so many clothes. Yeah, I think I do. Wait. I have a, well, I have zippered one that zips in the back. Mm -hmm. It's got like stripes, uh, like big stripe on it. And so, well, it's got a black stripe all the way down and they're white. It's yeah. got the black. I have those. They're at the house. Okay. It's got, um, I have two pairs actually. One is too small and one is just about right. The other one I bought anyway, that was too small because it was on sale and it's a good deal. Um, but yeah, they have stripes. And they have zipper. Well, what does that mean? What is that? Because I believe you were wearing a pair like that when this, when this happened. Remember I told you about the camera? It was taking pictures by mm -hmm. accident. Mm -hmm. The camera was upside down. It flash. There's no doubt in my mind that you did this. None. So you can go until you're blue in the face and tell me you weren't there and you had nothing to do with it. I won't believe you. 
I will not believe it because Travis is telling me that you did this to him. That's my job. My job is to speak for him. And this is what he's telling me. And I want to know why. That's, it's killing me inside. That's I don't know why. Thing. Like, there's no reason for it. There's no reason why. There's no reason I would ever want to hurt him. There's no way anybody else. He never have, raped me. Nobody. He never. There's no way anyone else could have left your father in blood on that wall. No way. Get that through your head. If I was going to ever try to kill somebody, I would use gloves. I've got plenty of them. I would have said you were, you know, you had planned this out perfectly. Maybe you were going there to just talk to him, have a good time with him. Something got out of hand. Even if I were there, and even if I were going there to just have a good time with him. What if I tell you somebody saw you there? Neighbor. Do you remember some of the neighbors? Just know you. The next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. And his wife. Mm -hmm. I don't know his wife. But okay. What about some of the neighbors across the street? No, I've never met them. No. But you've you've hung around there quite a bit, and they know you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've seen you there on that day. I wasn't there that day. Jody, you were there that day. And I have a solid case against you. And I can present it to the judge. As cold as it is, as it is now. I don't know why she did it. Or I can present it to the judge. With your explanation. With your parents' explanation. You have you parents? talked to your parents about what happened? Um... I told them I was worried about stuff. About what stuff? I said that, well, they knew I was upset about Travis, and I feel really bad by the way I was acting, because there wasn't, especially toward my grandparents, there were why, a lot of times Why are they not surprised that you're sitting here talking to me about this? What, what do you mean? They're not surprised. They're Probably concerned. They're, they're hurt. I haven't, but my other detectives have. And they're very concerned with you. But they kind of suspected that you had something to do with Travis's death as well. Whose no, parents think no, that? Th that's because I told them that a lot of people were dropping my name. And I said, I'm not worried about it because I didn't do it. I said, but it's very much, it's hurting my reputation right now. Let's we'll see true. what happens. You don't have to pay the price. Well, what's the price? Deja Jody nu mai spune că este nevinovată. A înțeles că dovizile împotriva ei sunt solide și că sunt șanse să fie găsită vinovată. Acum deja se interesează care este pedeapsa. Pe de altă parte, anchetatorul vrea să afle motivul, de ce l-a omorât. El până la urmă o poate închide pe Jody în orice moment, dar vrea să știe adevărul. Că este o fostă iubită nebună nu este îndeajuns. Ascunde această dorință prin a-i spune lui Jody că dacă recunoaște, ar putea primi o pedeapsă mai mică. Bineînțeles că nu recunoaște, dar anchetatorul vrea să îi reamintească de ce era așa de pe tort. Sau în cazul nostru, cuiul din coșciug? And part of that remorse is at least coming clean. When somebody doesn't come clean, I don't see any remorse. I don't know if a judge would see any remorse. I don't know if a jury would see any remorse. But I don't know. That's not for me to decide. My job is to investigate, find out who did it, why they did it, and present it to a court, and that's it. I just can't imagine. You have something to tell me, but you're, you're just so resistant. 
I know you're afraid, but you're already going through it right now. There's no backing up. There's no backing up to yesterday. There's no backing up to that day. It's already happened. And unfortunately, you're going to have to face the consequences. I'm, you know, if, if I did that, I would, I'd be fully ready to face the consequences. Um, I'm not really for things like, you know, I'm all for the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but... There is, there is no evidence to show anybody else did that. None. Well, I'm just... You think we'd find somebody else's fingerprint if they did that? Possibly. There's something that happens. You keep saying gloves. There's things that happen when people wear gloves. Then we can actually see that, oh, somebody wore gloves in this case. Nobody wore gloves in this case. Nobody. Well, no I'm, I'm just it. saying that if I were to carry out something like that, I would have worn gloves. I nobody else, nobody else did this. There's no evidence to show that anybody else did this but you. You were the only one. That is it. And I'm not seeing any remorse. I'm not seeing any anything from you to make me believe anything otherwise. You can continue to say, I didn't do it. Well, but you're the kid that got caught on videotape stealing the candy. And you continue to say, it wasn't me. I have the proof. I have the pictures. It wasn't me. I don't think you would you would admit to it if somebody, if your own mother saw you do this, and she told me, yeah, I saw her do this, you would say, no, it wasn't me. Why won't you admit to it? I just can't. I didn't kill Travis. I just didn't. I did not take his life. Did you have anything to do with the death of Travis? Not, I don't think I had anything directly to do with it, but I feel responsible somewhat for it. Then well, you've never seen his camera? His new camera? I don't know. He described it. Did you ever touch his camera? I've never seen it. Okay, so there's no reason your fingerprint should be on it. <laughs> okay. Because that thing's off at a lab right now. And they're hopeful that they can get some prints off the camera. Okay. And if your prints come back on that camera, what are you going to say? Well, they won't come back on it because I've never touched it. That you still can't explain the rest of this stuff. I honestly can't explain the pictures. The other stuff, and it, or the palm print, the other stuff I can explain. No, you can't explain the blood either. Because that blood is in blood. I mean, that it's it's part of the print. Unless you cut yourself at the beginning of the year and left your palm print in blood and it stayed there until he was killed. I cut myself. It wasn't the beginning of the year. It was before convention. No, you can't explain it. I'd, I'd have to say early March. That palm print is there in blood. Partially yours and partially his. Is, is it possible that there's just like any other way in the universe that that could have gotten there? Possible. Probable is the question you need to ask. Probable is absolutely not probable. I understand that, but it is possible. Anything is possible. That is very compelling. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here. That's why I traveled here. Because I came here to arrest you and get an explanation from you. That's the second reason. And since you're not giving me an explanation, I guess we'll just continue with the. With the uh, I just have no reason. reason to hurt Travis. You do have a reason to hurt Travis. What would my reason possibly be? There is a whole history of you two, but and everybody knows it. I have a whole history with other guys. Why in my peers. is everybody saying that you had something to do with his death? Why is everybody saying that you are capable of hurting him? Everybody says it. I don't know why anyone So don't tell I'm me capable. that you're not capable. I don't even hurt spiders.
Cum vi s-a părut Jody? Este ea o fost o iubită nebună? În tot acest timp, lui Jody nu i s-a confirmat sau infirmat că este filmată. A, și după ce polițistul a părăsit camera, ea a mai fost lăsată câteva minute după care a fost dusă în arest. Haideți să vedem ce s-a întâmplat în acele minute. Cred că aici pe final și-a aranjat ceacrele pentru ce urma. Glumesc. În timpul procesului, Jody Arias a dat mai multe declarații contradictorii și a susținut inițial că nu a avut nicio implicare în crimă. Ulterior, ea a afirmat că a acționat în autoapărare, susținând că a fost abuzat de Travis. Cu toate acestea, pe baza probelor și a mărturilor prezentate, Jody Arias a fost găsită vinovată de crimă de gradul 1 în anul 2013. Ulterior, juriul nu a ajuns la un acord cu privire la sentință, adică nu se puteau decide dacă Jody merită să fie închisă pe viață sau să primească pedeapsa capital, astfel că ea a fost condamnată la închisoare pe viață, fără posibilitatea de eliberare condiționată. Cazul lui Jody Aris este unul extrem de tulburător și complex. Ne amintește că adevărurile ascunse pot ieși la suprafață și că justiția poate fi făcută. Vreau să subliniez că acest videoclip este o prezentare a faptelor și a evenimentelor legate de acest caz și nu are scopul de a justifica sau de a judeca acțiunile lui Joe Diarius. Acest caz a fost foarte mediatizat, tocmai prin prisma personalității lui Jody. Dacă sunteți curioși, vă invit să căutați fazele de la procesul ei sau interviurile din închisoare. Sau poate le punem chiar aici pe canal. Ce ziceți? Vă mulțumesc că ați urmărit acest videoclip și vă invit să lăsați comentarii cu părerea voastră despre acest caz terifiant. Dacă doriți să aflați mai multe despre alte cazuri true crime, nu ezitați să ne anunțați. Ne vedem într-un alt videoclip. Zi fine.